Finding the light in a painting is very important in watercolour to create paintings that have got atmosphere, a mood, a feeling and impact. Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter and I produce full length video tutorials with commentary which will help you improve your watercolour techniques and hopefully create some great looking paintings. In this video, I'm going to take a, a street scene here and try and cover why light is so important in a watercolour painting. Immediately, you can see here in this scene, a street scene, a French street scene, the strong sunlight hitting these almost background buildings and the impact, the difference in values, tonal values between that that light hitting the buildings and the darker foreground. But as we look more closely at the scene, we can pick out other areas of light and dark, things that we can play on, maybe emphasize when we come to do the painting. So the light hitting the, the chimney tops, uh, the, the side of the chimney, the light hitting and some sort of reflected light hitting the shop window. Over on the right hand side of the street, uh, the light is, the, the sunlight is coming from the right, it's hitting the left hand buildings and it's bouncing back onto these right hand buildings. So we've got a little bit of light hitting um, bits and pieces of the, the shops on the right hand side. The lighter value of the pedestrian crossing. The, this, this is market day, so we've got some canopies and uh, market coverings there, awnings. We've got some light uh, light cars, the sunlight is, is hitting those. Again, creating areas of contrast, which does um, help very well in, in watercolour to, to, great, to, to create greater looking paintings. Okay, so let's see how we get on. I should say, if you want to keep an eye on the uh, source photograph while I'm doing this painting. In your browser, you should be able to copy the address of the video and open that, open that, we'll paste it to uh, another tab or another window, and then you can just Alt Tab, you can just then toggle between um, that photograph and my, me doing my painting. So in Carrying out the initial um, steps of the watercolour painting, um, it's important to get the drawing right. And I kind of try to visualise the finished painting on my paper, uh, getting in the key elements in my mind. And then, of course, starting with the initial drawing. Now, I know some people go straight into a painting. They don't need to do a, um, an initial drawing. Uh, they're very clever that way. And you, you get a nice uh, loose feeling to a watercolor when, when you can do that. But I prefer to using a soft pencil. So uh, I've got some fairly dark lines, just get in the main objects and trying to, in my mind, this is all about light and shade, finding the light in watercolor, uh, trying to uh, define what are those dark areas in the uh, painting. So the dark areas are obviously the foreground, um, it sort of caresses around, it sort of frames the the brightly lit scene beyond um, uh, the scene. So this this is what I'm getting in now, is, is, is in my mind, I'm getting in those areas of light and dark. Of course, being a street scene, perspective is very important. So there's a little bit of that going on, particularly on the right hand side with all of the um, shop windows. So that, that's important to, uh, to get right as well. So um, the initial background buildings are done. Uh, I've come down to street level. I've got it right in my own mind, the, uh, the right-hand buildings. So there's the right-hand edge of the, the right-hand uh, street level 
of the right hand building. It's sort of 45 degree angle. I like to think of things as, as angles. So right at the top of the right hand side buildings, it's it's going, it's, it's almost vertical. Um, and then the street level is, as I say, it's sort of 45 degree angle. Quite tricky with the pedestrian crossing. You know, I could get something wrong there and I just uh, can rectify that with the pencil. Very difficult when you come to painting, if they're not right, um, after the drawing stage, things get a little bit more tricky and challenging to, to put right. So that drawing has got to be perfect. So I've got a car in, or I have a few cars, or a couple of cars, certainly in the scene. This being a street scene, we've got to have cars, we've got to have people, otherwise it looks a little bit empty. Um, they're going to provide interest and scale in the painting. And these figures, this is all about finding the light, so I will have some light figures and some dark figures. So dark figures will look better against a lighter background, a lighter figure will look better against a darker background, or some elements of the figure um, in, in, again, in against a, a darker background. So it's a market scene as well, so I've got to have people as well. Right hand side perspective, so Vertical at the top, 45 degrees right at the bottom, and then these different angles in between. Just a, a few lines to assist me when I come to the painting. And these could be, some of these little shapes could be windows or doors and uh, little bits of light, as I say, um, strong sunlight hitting the left hand side, bouncing back over to the right hand side, creating little bits of shards of, of light in amongst the darkness. So there is a, a tree in the scene, which, um, well, there's trees in the background, uh, a tree just halfway down the street next to the uh, market awnings and um, yeah that's pretty much done for the initial drawing. So next step after doing the initial drawing is laying down the first or laying down the wash which the main objective of is uh, covering up most of the paper with the underlying tones or values and colours that, that I'll have in the end painting. And I'll paint around certain areas that I want to keep very light. And also this is where I can achieve some different edges in watercolour. Um, edges are very important in watercolour, soft edges, hard edges, a combination of those in the painting. And some, some areas will be, this, this will be it, I won't, I won't touch again, this, this is the end thing. Uh, for example, the sky, which I invariably start off with first of all, getting in the sky, now going over the outline of the buildings to achieve some softer edges in places. This is, uh, so let me let me point out the palette to you uh, on the right hand side. So starting from the top, I've got neutral tint, then burnt umber. Third one down on the right is burnt sienna, yellow ochre I'm using there now to uh, get in some of the the uh, colours of these French buildings. Uh, below yellow ochre is Viridian green, then I've got cobalt turquoise, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, pretty much halfway down, 
and then Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, then Windsor Red, which is a quite a bright red colour, and uh, what's below that? There's Light Red, Cadmium Orange, and finally a Lemon Yellow. So I'm just lightly going over the background buildings, the blue of the sky is blending with the light yellow ochre wash for the buildings. I'm using a mop brush here for this first stage so I try to use as big a brush as I've got um, for this stage because I want to cover, I'm covering large areas of the painting. I'm using a Raphael mop brush here. This is actually an older brush. They've discontinued um, this particular line. They're now, um, I use their synthetic uh, brushes, the Soft Aqua range, which I could, I could have used uh, um, the, the newer Soft Aqua brushes for this. So right hand side, uh, a little bit darker. Some of this, some of this, these values now will be the light, um, some reflected light hitting windows, um, that sort of thing. So it's going to go than this. It's just the initial wash covering the main areas of the scene. A little bit darker down towards the foreground. Now with watercolour the paint is going to dry a lot lighter than it looks right now so when it's wet it appears darker. As it dries it's going to lighten up a bit so sometimes you've got to go a little bit darker than you think. You've got to try and compensate in your own mind for that. So this colour now, this value now, is going to be the lighter areas. We're, we're trying to establish the, the light here, the lighter areas. So this is going to be the colour of the white uh, strips of the pedestrian crossing. Go a little bit warmer in the bottom right corner. And everything is still quite moist here. I can still be moving the paint around and adding darker colours into them. But just getting down that, uh, that initial wash. So I'm just going to fast forward my uh, my video recording. So I've got the hairdryer out just to speed up that drying process. And you, you might have noticed that immediately it went quite a bit lighter, uh, those colours. So everything is now 100% dry before I go on to the next stage, which will be the darks. And this is where we will effectively find the light. We'll start, we're, we're going to start to find the light now by adding in the darks that will make the lighter areas a lot lighter. So I've got a smaller mop brush. And holding the brush closer to the end, I've got a bit more control. And we go over the rooftops fairly carefully. I was talking about edges just now and you can see with the, the chimneys they've um, they've got a, a soft edge around them. You can just still see the pencil outline of the chimneys but uh, the colours have moved around, that yellow ochre has bled into the sky which, which is a nice effect that you can achieve in watercolour. 
So just going down the street, follow the lines of these rooftops. As I go down towards the background, I don't need to be too concerned with too much detail. Um, that's sort of, the background should be kept fairly simple. So I'm just trying to establish the main darker areas and, and immediately we're starting to get a feeling for the light buildings by adding in these these uh, darker areas and this tree now uh, right at the end of the street a bit of negative painting around the building that's just in front of it and that will immediately make that building with a darker with a darker tree immediately going to make that building look a lot lighter so this is actually uh, the brush i'm using is actually quite an old one um it lost it's lost a lot of its hairs and uh, you do sometimes with these older brushes you would have just seen there it's sort of splayed out a little bit you get some interesting um, brush marks when you when you use a brush like this uh, an old mop, mop brush and splaying out the hairs a bit like a, a bit like a brush a chimney sweep would use if you can see what I mean. Um, great for doing foliage. So this is the uh, this tree halfway down the street, and I'm going to come quite dark as I go into the uh, the the gap between these two buildings. So a little bit darker um, in the bottom left hand corner of that tree, but. Uh, Coming down over the, the awning, the, the market um, stall awning, that will make that appear a lot lighter. So these very important left-hand shadows, so sun coming from the right, so these will be the shadows of the buildings on the right. Now I could have dampened the, the buildings on the left just a little bit with some clear water to get a soft edge, but uh, or I could have used a dry brush brush stroke to quickly get um, on rough paper to get a, a softer edge. Um, I've gone for this uh, slightly harder edge there, um, but it, it works. And we'll go in with some darker details as a next step, but that's just the main area of shadow there from the top. And then trying to create the impression of a window um, catching some light on the left hand side so a bit of reflected light gone a bit darker in places on that side but it it will dry lighter so that's ultramarine blue bit of burnt sienna which for me is a, a it's, uh, it's quite a common um, combination that I know a lot of other artists use to to get in darker, darker areas. So we're down to the street level. Which is, um, it's almost... Uh, 
as regards number of degrees, it's sort of 30 degrees off the horizontal or thereabouts. Now, a bit of careful painting around that figure. I said earlier, might, or oh, I will have a, a light figure against a darker background and some darker figures silhouetted against a lighter background. I think that's going to work quite well um, in this watercolour. Um, so a bit of shadow now underneath the market stores. Bit of bit of red there just to uh, create a bit more interest um, down there in the street. Carefully paint around that car. So we can see now as we as we come around the the background buildings straight away look hopefully you can see they look a lot lighter than they were um, initially. Now coming down the street towards the foreground and getting in this pedestrian crossing. This is quite an important element of the scene. Um, pedestrian crossings, they can be quite nice to, to include them, to help you or to help the viewer's eye lead you into a scene. Uh, they're going to help with, with uh, perspective as well. Um, and I think the this this pedestrian crossing going from side to side, going going horizontally across the scene, but those those white lines they uh, will help lead the eye into the scene. Now the initial wash I laid down, uh, you might have thought, oh, that's going quite dark for a pedestrian crossing. Surely, the white bands are going to be very very light. But you've got to you got to observe that this is in deep shade. Um, they are going to be a lot darker. In fact, I could have gone a little bit darker still with those white lines. Um, and also, pedestrian crossings—they're not too perfect. They've they've got bits of paint missing, bits of the road surface showing, tire marks over them, and so on. So you can always go a little bit darker, um, well, a bit darker than than I've gone there. Over to the right hand side, starting fairly dark at the top. So there's this vert almost vertical um, edge to the roof line. And there's a bit of a gap um, at the top there of that roof line. Now, as I come down, I'm going to go a bit lighter and then darker, darker still uh, towards the street level. So there we are, I've got some light windows. Um, those windows have, have found the light and uh, just a few here and there, not too many, because if, if I did too many, it would be too, um, if I left too many lighter areas there, it would be too fussy. And uh, your attention would be, the viewer's attention would be too much on that right hand side. I want, I want the, the focal point to be um, maybe that light figure on the left hand side or the, the, the cars or some viewpoint at the end of the street. And I'll leave that uh, on the right hand side of the pedestrian crossing, this this uh, line I've left unpainted. That... that um, that that's sort of where the side of the pavement is, the sidewalk is. So, so that will help, hopefully, again, like the pedestrian crossing, lead the viewer's eyes into the composition. So I'm checking the edge of my, my brush there. I want a good flat edge for these shadows underneath the rooftops. So 
one under the um, main roof there. I need a vertical. I need a vertical halfway down as well. Um, this car. Cars are really simple to paint when they're when you're looking at them face on or um, from the back. They're just they're just basically some rectangles slapped together. There's the windscreen, and then the windscreen of the car just behind that. So that's pretty much uh, the main darks done, the, the shadow and shade. And I'm now on to the fourth step, um, my fourth stage of the watercolour. So I should have, uh, should have mentioned my, my, uh, my normal sort of four steps to a watercolour. First step, doing the outline drawing second step doing the wash third step as i've just done the darker areas getting in the main um, darker values to help us find the light and uh, uh, get the the contrast of the light areas to the dark areas and now this four stage smaller brush um, not the smallest brush i've got but uh, a smaller synthetic brush generally with a good point to it, a good edge, um, just adding in the finer details. So I'm just going around the scene and painting in maybe a few windows, a few architectural details. Now, I don't want to do too much on those buildings because that is a lighter area of the scene. So just a hint of a few window openings here and there, not all of them, because the more detail, like the right hand building, the, the more things I put in there, it's going to detract from the brightness of that scene. There'll be too much detail uh, in that in that particular part of the scene. Perhaps a little, a little top to that uh, market awning. If you do want to have um, a go at painting some of my, my videos and you do want a critique from me, I have a very popular uh, scheme up on Patreon. Uh, if you go to patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T, you'll see up there uh, just a bit more information on the, the different um, tiers of membership. It's basically a membership platform and a way it's a community a little club if you like of people from all around the world and every month i set uh, different painting projects with different objectives and then you all have a go um, submit your uh, send me a photograph of your painting and then i send back to you a little video um uh, two or three minutes a uh, video of um me chatting about your painting and uh hopefully giving you some hints and tips and just my opinion of, of your painting based on those painting projects. So I say, uh, for getting more information um, on that, go up to my 
Patreon site. Hopefully uh, see you up there. Also on December the 15th, 2019, so if you're listening to this after December uh, 15th, 2019, I've got a live online paint-along session. So uh, we're going to do an Italian, um, a little coastal village called Rio Maggiore uh, with some boats in it and sea, distant sea and buildings and people. Um, so for more details of that, go to my website, timwilmot.com you can see uh, more information on that uh, paint along session and registration details so just adding in a few marks here and there defining as i'm doing here defining this this car uh, in more detail The paint is still fairly moist or going towards the damp stage. So when I add in darker, thicker color, I'm going to get softer edges appearing. But these darks are going to help me um, help me achieve the range of values and uh, make the the lighter areas appear a little bit lighter. So hopefully we can get the feeling of um, the light hitting the side of uh, these cars and the, the light in the distance as well. It's quite dark uh, at the in the gap in between these buildings where the market awnings are. So I think if I go a lot darker around the figure on the left, that's going to appear, make it appear a lot lighter. So I'm using a bit of neutral tint, a bit of ultramarine blue uh, for this. I do sometimes use uh, neutral tint. Um, I should say neutral tint is, is a sort of dark grayish color. Um, sort of similar to Payne's gray. Payne's gray is more of a bluish gray, but this is, well, as the, as the name suggests, it's neutral. And uh, I would normally use neutral tint with another color, maybe altering blue to get, uh, just to make it um, a lot darker, more intense. Um, and then so sometimes use it neat, use it, use just pure neutral tint where, in, in moderation, where I just want to get a, a very dark color. So these, these darks over on that left-hand side, I think they do make um, that, that uh, window a little bit more realistic over there. And just uh, you know, give, giving you the architectural details um, just makes it more convincing as a shop window so that we can, you know, we've got that bit of, bit of reflection on the left hand side. So this figure. Yeah, figures on the right hand side, I need to have them darker silhouetted against that lighter background. There's a figure there with a, a jacket. Perhaps that person's just walking away from the market. They've done their shopping and they're returning home.
not too much detail to the legs of that um, this light figure on the left. Uh, I'm so almost blending it into the deep shadows um, in that area. Now this right hand figure, again, it's going to be dark, but maybe a little bit lighter than the figure behind. Just so that we can see that they're two, they're two separate figures. And being in the shade, we don't need to bother too much about legs. We we can, we just got the impression of a couple of figures, um, one slightly further away from us, um, on that right hand side. Use the uh, use my fingertips just to help to move the paint around. The top of the that top edge of the roof has gone a bit too light, so I do need to darken it up a bit with um, with this dark with these darker values now. Perhaps there are a few little window boxes or balconies. So ground floor windows, just a few of them. And these, these lighter areas that um, I left unpainted um, these the window the reflections in the windows I'll just go in with a, a darker value around some of those just to uh, emphasize the, the light on those basically dry brush strokes where there's not too much water on the brush at all they're they're um it's a quite thick paint almost um straight off the palette and it enables us to get some quite nice brush marks particularly it works it works very well on rough paper um maybe not so well on if you're using very smooth paper or uh, hot press paper. I'm using Saunders Waterford here. Um, Saunders Waterford is, is very good quality watercolour paper. There are others, but I prefer to use this. And this is the uh, cold press paper. So it's medium um, texture and uh, you do have a slightly rough um, rough edge, uh, rough surface to it. So um, it does give us, when we do these dry brush marks or we have a particularly soft brush, we get some nice, nice effects occurring. Yeah, so I think it's going to work quite well going a little bit darker behind that figure. Just makes it pop out a little bit more. When I'm there, do you see? immediately that's uh, a lot lighter than it was initially. Maybe just a hint of another figure behind that car. 
catching a little bit of shadow underneath um, or a bit of bit of light hitting the side of it coming from the right hand side and a bit of shadow on the uh, on the left hand side of the figure Now, in the photograph, there were some lights going across the street, um, basically for the Christmas period, I think, mainly. But they're they're kept they're kept in place and turned on um, during the holiday season. So that's that's quite a nice thing to have in a painting, a street scene where you've got a left hand side and a right hand side. Something joining the two, cables. Um, I've used a banner before um, in some street scenes where you may have some political banner or some promotional banner going across. But these are um, uh, festive lights, and I'm not painting every. I'm not painting precisely every single light bulb, but just giving an impression uh, of. Uh, the these sort of um, semicircles of lights. I think that works quite well, and it fills in that sky. I could have put some birds up there, or maybe some tall, taller lamp posts, um, just to fill in that sky. Because it is, um, it's a, it's a fairly big part of the the overall um, area of of the painting. So I needed to. Um, I think that works quite well, filling that in, and it's it's going over the rooftops, it's going partially into the side of the buildings. Um, yeah, I think that works quite well in connecting, joining the left-hand side with the right-hand side and uh, just filling in that uh, void space um, up there in the sky. as I did with the left-hand figure, if I put a little bit of dark around the right-hand figure that just makes it, just defines it a bit more, not too much, but uh, it just makes it slightly lighter against a darker background. So some drier marks on the left-hand side. And as I sometimes do with street scenes, put in some, create some tire marks with this, uh, with the same brush and dry, dry brush strokes. Generally going, you know, up and down the street just to help lead the eye in. So a bit of burnt umber, a bit of neutral tint. Darker, darker line under that, um, immediately under the roof, under the roof edge. Use the fingertip again. Just picking up areas here and there that need a bit of adjustment.
just basically bouncing around the painting now, just picking up some little areas where this smaller brush, it's actually one of the, the cheapest brushes I've got, um, but it's got the right sort of springiness of um, the hairs, if I could describe it, um, just to help me get the right sort of uh, these, these little marks. Not too much on that right hand side. Bit on the uh, Hill Street level. So look forward to getting your comments and see you on the next video.